Anxious Attachment and Sexual Abuse, Part 2. Keep watching. Hi everyone, Mariana Turov and I am your favorite coach and therapist if you have anxious attachment style. So first, I want to remind you to subscribe, give me a like, give me a comment. I always read them and I love hearing from you. And also, don't forget that there are private sessions available if you want some private mentoring, coaching, therapy from me. And there is an Insta, um, Instagram. There is a WhatsApp number that you can text my coordinator from anywhere in the world and you and I can get to talk and I can get to help you the best way I can. Also, don't forget there is going to be a link down there very soon about my masterclass so that you can get it and you can watch it if you missed it. And also, don't forget that I also make custom made meditations so that's another one of my products and you can contact that whatsapp number if that is what you want so let's continue with this video <clears throat> this is part two of sexual abuse and anxious attachment as you know in part one i share with you my own experience with sexual abuse um where i can tell you everything about it i mean long story short i was molested by a member of my family and and at my grandparents house and I didn't understand how sexual abuse or past sexual abuse it during childhood or during your teen years can affect you as an adult I had no idea um, most of the time the brain will shut down the memories and you will know they're there you just continue move on with your life and you think that's that but it does have an effect on your anxious attachment if that is what you have and I'm going to tell you some things that I discovered that my past with being molested interfered with my behavior and how I developed with romantic relationships. Remember that um, attachment styles are that. They're labels. They're labels to help you predict your behavior in a relationship. So if you have anxious attachment, it's a label also that therapists we use to see how you're going to develop and how you're going to relate to others. What are your feelings gonna be? What are your thoughts gonna be? What are your limiting beliefs as well? So what happens with sexual abuse is the whole experience that is full of shame starts to build up some obsolete belief systems and um, that you will carry on through all the rest of your teen years, your young adulthood and your adulthood, and finally on your serious relationships. So I'm gonna share with you what they are. Now, this is not to say that they're there. It's like a, it's almost like a software with a virus, right? So that doesn't mean that you never get rid of a software virus. You can get rid of it. You just need to do some work and I can teach you how, but there's, my coordinator there <laughs> and I can teach you how I also overcame my anxious attachment and all of this whole story of sexual abuse that it's attached to it so let's go with the first one first is that we have emotional reactions such as shame and humiliation okay with the experience of sexual abuse and guilt so people with anxious attachment have a big ten tendency of depression and anxiety. So I can tell you again, my personal experience, I ended up, I think, in on Prozac by the age of 18 and I didn't understand why. I didn't know why, my parents didn't know why. They're like, you have a wonderful life, you have friends, you're popular in school, why are you getting depressed? We didn't know. And then through my adulthood, I felt better I didn't take the medication then I felt better again and then I remember speaking to a uh, psychiatrist that told me this is I'm already in college and he told me this, this is the third time that you feel like you need to get back on medication and you feel depressed that means that you are gonna be depressed for life and you're gonna be in, on medication for life I'm here to tell you that that is not true <laughs> you can overcome anxiety and depression and I mean some people will have it really bad it's mixed with psychosis the level in which I had it 
knowing that I've had traumatic experiences in the past that had led me to feeling depressed and anxious. When we work on these false belief systems that those traumatic experiences have built in us, then the depre- there is no link to feeling depressed or feeling sad or feeling hopeless. So again, some of these depressions, uh, episodes of depression or being depressed depends on how you're wired. You know, if that this is just something that it's almost like a chemical imbalance. All depressions are chemical imbalances, but if this is a chemical imbalance that you cannot influence at all with therapy then that's a different story but if you have had somewhat of a rocky past then we may want to explore that and see how we can help you overcome your anxiety and your depression the second one (coughs) is the tendency of have of having intrusive and recurring thoughts hello this is the story of all anxious attached people rumination rumination the x the x what did i do what did i say what did i what and you start scanning through messages you start scanning through scenes of what happened with that person and you start doing all of this and you it's very easy for you to get flashbacks and not being able to sleep trying to rehearse so that is something that happens with sexual abuse too like the sexual abuse can be a trigger for you to have a tendency of rumination okay some people may not remain may have anxious attachment but they're not ruminators okay but usually sexual abuse will give you that faculty i guess to ruminate um Another one is that distorted self-perception. Um, and this develops um, a belief that you might have caused your sexual abuse. Um, I know for a fact <laughs> that I didn't cause it. I, I know I didn't do anything to influence this person to come into the room and start touching me inappropriately. I know I didn't do that. But most of the time, when there is no logical explanation, the victims of sexual abuse tend to think, well, maybe God hates me, or maybe life is not on my side, or maybe the universe is against me, or maybe I'm just cursed, or maybe I'm just I'm just destined to not be happy and that is how we blame ourselves you know i logically didn't do anything for this person to abuse me but then our mind has a tendency to find answers you know because we can't find an answer then the brain will do anything to give you an answer and my answer was god hates me i am cursed so imagine if my subconscious mind has a belief, a part of it believes that God hates me and that <laughs> and that I don't deserve love and that I'm cursed, then of course, I mean, no wonder, you know, years after I had horrible relationships because what I believe is that I was cursed, that I didn't deserve love and that I was, that I would, I would cause all this, that I was just destined to be unhappy. So that's why we have, want to explore the subconscious mind and the limiting beliefs that live there so that we can switch them up and start anew and reinvent yourself. That's really the work that I do. That's my job to help you get rid of all that garbage. And how do we do it? That's why I'm a therapist. <laughs> so um, another one is to be less skilled in self-protection. People that have been abused um, sexually as children or as teenagers, they're not very equipped and not very skilled to kind of sense and have a radar of who is an abuser. So they tend to be abused again. Some people that have been molested as, as children, as adults, they might have gotten raped or ripped off or betrayed or abused in any way, you know, like financial abuse physical abuse, emotional abuse, psychological abuse, not just sexual abuse, but the abuse continues, okay? Um, So it's when you go through these experiences, you are that type of person that wants to work more on your skills of self-protection and be good about your boundaries. Not boundaries against other people, but boundaries to protect yourself because you understand that you're valuable and that your life is invite only. 
that's something very valuable that I learned. My life is invite only. Not everyone is gonna get that huge amount of empathy that I have to give. Invite only, that's how you get it from me, <laughs> okay? So, another one is that they're more apt to accept being victimized by others, okay? So they're more apt to accept being victimized. So it's almost like, People that have been abused have a tendency to hook up with these, be paired up with these narcissists or these, um, I don't want to say psychopaths or sociopaths, okay? I don't want to get that far in there, but you could. So people that are these energy vampires, right? These people that may have narcissistic tendencies or people that are emotionally unavailable, um, people that just really, harm your well-being and it's very easy to feel like the victim you know very easy to feel victimized um, very easy to attract people that will victimize you and it's very easy for you to feel like you are the victim and that you can't get out and all you're doing is just licking your wounds and licking your wounds and licking your wounds and you feel like you're always recovering and healing from people you know and that needs to stop how long are you going to be healing after the next person and healing after the experience with the next person and healing after a bad friend and healing after another bad experience with your parents and healing and healing and healing and healing? Ain't nobody got time for that, okay? No, you don't have to do that. You don't have to spend your time doing this over and over and over. No, we just have to reinvent who you are after the abuse. And now you're the gatekeeper of who you invite into your life. Remember, same thing, invite only. And then the other one that I find, the last one that I find, I think very relatable and very common for anxious attached people in my practice is that tendency to normalize your experiences, your bad experiences with your partner, you know, and then all of these like excuse making, like, all couples have problems, right? You know, all couples fight, right? Relations are not perfect, right? You know, it is what it is. Now, we tend to normalize these things and we believe that that lack of respect from your partner is normal, that your partner is flirting with a wait waiter or a waitress is normal, that your partner wants to include a third person into their relationship without your consent is normal, or that you want to, your partner goes and cheats on you, you're like, it's, a, it's, it's just, you know, what, that's what they do you know that's what my partner does it's okay you know that they he, she was drunk or he was drunk and then we just normalize these experiences so these are the things that sexual abuse may do with you and sometimes you may not realize it so keep them in mind okay if that is your case there is hope you can fix it you can go back into your subconscious mind and correct these beliefs you know and obviously i am 100 percent confident that i can help you so it doesn't have to be with me still it could be with your areas therapist but definitely you want to get help and get your feet wet watch my master class or read a blog or something but get familiar with it don't leave this experience buried because this sexual abuse experience that is buried carry some obsolete beliefs that you may want to change for your own benefit so i hope this video served you i want to tell you that you're very important that you're very special and that i love you and i will see you on the next one bye